is where the presidential debate is um, coming on and you it's strictly by invitation but you can watch this on um, all our TV um, channels and even radio stations across the country so make a date with um, the Ghana Broadcasting of uh, uh, broadcast Ghana Broadcasting Corporation to uh, be a part of this and also uh, other media houses are also joining in to to take feed from us so the authentic and trusted voice of Ghana well Right now, we are going to talk about um, environmental conservation. And we know that uh, for years, we've had concerns about ozone layer depletion, global warming, earthquakes, and for Ghana, our situation with uh, poor sanitation and all these things, most of them uh, have been um, attributed to human activities. And so environmental conservation is important. And this morning I have a guest here who has um, done some research to look into the role of the church in environmental um, con conservation. So my guest is Elizabeth um, Korasari. She is the executive director of Real Opportunities Network. Good morning to you, Elizabeth. Good morning. Um, how are you this morning? I'm fine. How okay. are you too? Very well. So you did some research to find out uh, the role of um, churches in environmental conservation. Tell us about uh, what drove you into conducting this research. Thank you, Martina, and good morning to my viewers. Um, Ghana situation, as you said, it's about cleanliness. And uh, we all know about this adage that cleanliness is next to godliness. Mm. So if cleanliness is next to godliness, then what is our understanding of godliness when it comes to Christians in Ghana or the church in Ghana? So what actually motivated me to take up this uh, research is uh, I wanted to know or understand mm -hmm. that is this scripture that the church should involve itself in environmental issues? Okay. Because uh, at a point I realized that a whole year passes and I haven't heard any preaching on the environment. For my own church, mm -hmm. I can say that. For a whole the, year? A whole year will pass. You hear preachings on radio, and, and you, no one is focusing on the environment, and what church members should do to ensure that our surroundings are clean. So during this year, we've had issues with the environment, um, the June 3 disaster. Is it the same year that you conducted Yes, I research? did it, yes. But there was no sermon in church concerning? Sermon. Not about radio programs. I'm talking about the pulpit using the Pope Interesting. to share information mm -hmm. about uh, the environment, okay. especially sanitation. Mm -hmm. Because um, actually, Scripture tells us, uh, or the creation account, mm -hmm. tells us that God has created the world. Mm -hmm. But God creating the world does not mean that God created the world and dashed it to mankind. No. The earth we live on, it still belongs to God. Okay. And that is one of the first things as Christians we should understand. So we are caretakers? We are caretakers. We are just stewards of God's earth. Mm. And until we get that understanding, mm -hmm. it will be difficult for us to clean our environment and ensure that God's place is okay. clean. Okay. So the challenge is our exposure to the fact that the environment belongs to God. Fine. In the Sunday schools, we are being taught mm -hmm. that uh, God created heaven and earth. You know, this is, is even a rhyme. We sing it. Okay. But has the theology behind create the creation story been shared with our children mm -hmm. in the Sunday school for them to know that if you drop something, mm -hmm. it's just like you are here. We cannot just drink and drop it on the floor. Okay. If you are in your room, you cannot just drink, eat banku, and just throw the rubbish down in your hall. Mm. No. It is the same way we should take it outside. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about your findings in the research. Okay. My research uh, was mainly a, a DEX research. That is, a, 
I did literature review, mm -hmm. look at what people have done mm -hmm. on, on, on the environment regarding the church and the environment. Okay. And uh, obviously, uh, it seems a lot had been done. Okay. The World Council of Churches had done a lot of work when it mm -hmm. comes to the church and the environment. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of uh, meetings and seminars have been held in the past, since 1979, mm -hmm. about the environment, when this climate change issue started yes. rearing its head. But uh, when you come to Ghana, seeking material on the environment, the church and the environment, doesn't really exist. Okay. A few people have put word here and there. Mm -hmm. Some pastors have... Uh, you know, uh, spoken about it here and there, but it is not a business. It's not a core agenda on the church's calendar. Okay, for that is for Ghana, but other countries, um, do they concentrate on um, this aspect of uh, um, development in terms of environment? Do they concentrate on that in the pulpits? Do um, the churches really talk about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. In some evangelical churches, mm -hmm and the Roman Catholic Church. Okay. Because even recently, the Pope, the Pope we have, mm -hmm. came up with a long list of issues regarding the environment and what the church should do okay. regarding the environment. Okay. But Ghana, we are... But Ghana, we talk about prosperity, we talk about discipleship, but discipleship is holistic. Mm. You know, it's not just about the soul. Mm -hmm. If you win a soul mm -hmm. and you place the soul in the church... The soul that you place in the church, who you, you, you are trying to nurture, to mm -hmm. stop drinking, to mm -hmm. stop smoking. If the person is a liter, littering things around, the person should also get to the point mm -hmm. to understand that the environment where I live mm -hmm. belongs to God. So I should not litter things or okay. drop things around. Okay. Why do you think the churches are not talking about this environmental problem? Um, from my research, I found out that People believe when you talk about the environment is secular. Really? So things about the environment do not feature. It is not scriptural. It is not spiritual. Not okay. scriptural, but spiritual. Mm. It's secular. Uh, if you come into the environment too much, then it's like you are worshipping the environment. Really? Yes. You are worshipping things that are exist. Mm. You, you want to preserve animals. You want to preserve the forest. You, why do you want to preserve the forest? Mm. You know, because when you go back to our culture, mm -hmm. you know, when you will preserve a forest, it means they believe there's a God residing mm. in the forest. Okay. But no, it was just to preserve the environment. Okay. It was just to stop human activity, mm -hmm. to, to stop it to a certain extent. Okay, so... Have the religious uh, leaders, I mean, of the churches in Ghana, have some of them really communicated this to you, that this is the reason why we don't really talk about the environment in our church? Um, yes, one some, way or the other. One way or the other. Because they might not speak about it directly, mm -hmm. but indirectly you could see that our attitude towards the environment is basically because... Uh, we feel uh, most of the issues when it comes to environment mm -hmm. are secular, okay. you know. But <clears throat> the, the environment belongs to God. Mm. There is nothing secular or uh, nothing uh, secular or evil mm -hmm. about talking about the environment. It belongs to God and it's for God. Mm -hmm. So whatever a Christian does to the environment, mm -hmm. he's doing it to God. Okay. Our sanitation um, problem. When we've had, uh, when we had disasters like the June 3 and others, people came out even on radio and TV to talk about uh, the causes and all that. But you, as someone who has done work into this, why do you think we always get to that stage where we, we have disasters based on our poor sanitation uh, um, issues? Yeah, be, be, you know... Um, it is happening like that because uh, actually we haven't learned from our mistakes. Okay. We haven't taken anything from the past to, 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 to move us into the future. Okay. And secondly, we have influx of so many people, especially in the urban areas, mm. from different places. Mm. And you know, when you really want to take good care of something, it's all about ownership. 
But when people move into the city, they don't see, for instance, Accra as their own. They just want to tap whatever they really want to tap from Accra. So whatever the environment is, they don't care about it. So they think that they are just coming to Accra to take something and yes, go. and go. It doesn't belong to it them. It doesn't belong so to them. There's no need to take care of. There's no need. There's no need at all. To How take about care the of. other regions? Is, is there a similar situation? When and when you go to other regions, there, but when you go to the rural area, mm -hmm. it's our attitude. Okay. Attitude. People now, uh, you know, have lost it all when it comes to surroundings. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I'm a social worker and I've been traveling along so many communities. Okay. And some places you don't expect to find filth, mm -hmm. rubbish heaps here and there. Mm -hmm. You know, because no one is regulating anything. Yes. Our cultural and traditional systems are broken down. Mm -hmm. You know, and we are taking things for granted. Mm -hmm. People sit by field and eat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we are living in such mm -hmm. an indignified, mm -hmm. you know, manner mm -hmm. and it's it's a worry it's a worry seriously something has to start and start immediately and uh, my worry is that uh, i have been following the presidential encounters uh, here in gbc Great. Great. and people stand up to ask so many questions about so many things even repeating some of the questions but people are not asking questions about sanitation when so they come in it's the people us as a people who yes, don't the, mm -hmm. care about environment we or don't san care, sanitation. Yes. That's why we are not even asking, asking questions, questions concerning that. Okay. And and it's worrying. I was like, hey, mm -hmm. so no one is asking a president, when you come, how are our dreams going to be like? Are we just going to live like that and continue? Okay. Then we are not leaving anything for right. posterity. So Seriously. what's the way forward? The f way forward, many. Um, we have district assemblies. You know, we should. We have to break it down, mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. We have the district assemblies. We have the local uh, 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 authorities. Mm -hmm. The church and the local authorities have to collaborate. The pulpit is a very, very strong platform okay. for behavioral change. Okay. And if the pulpit is being used to champion sanitation in Ghana, and pastors push it into us, just as a pastor will push into a congregation that uh, drinking, smoking, you know, all these vices, uh, you, you, it's a sin against God. Mm -hmm. And the pastors are able to press on the issue that environmental, uh, 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 dirty, uh, uh, untidy environment mm -hmm. is a sin against God. We will move a but step But what if the congregation thinks that um, in the Bible, there's no clear ex uh, example of a punishment for someone who hasn't kept their environment clean. Like there's a punishment for adultery, uh, for stealing, for killing, but you don't see anything clear cut when it comes to sanitation. So they don't take it seriously. It is because the church is not talking about there are so many scriptures in the okay. Bible. Mm. Mm. Some 24 verse 1 tells us mm. the earth is mine. Okay. That is, the earth is God. Mm. God's. When you go to Deuteronomy 23, 13 and 14, when Moses, uh, God was giving direction as to how the Israelites should live in the camp, mm -hmm. he told them that when you poo poo, sorry, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> you should cover it. Mm. And the 14 tells us, our God moves among us all the time mm. to protect us from our enemies. So he, is, he doesn't want to see anything that is not, uh, in, 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 that is indecent. Mm. You know, he doesn't want to see anything that is indecent. For when he comes across things that are indecent, he will take himself away from us. Okay. Is that what Ghanaians we want? We want God to be far away from us. If we want God to dwell in Ghana and help us through our challenges, then it should start from our environment. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Elizabeth Korasari, Executive Director, Real Opportunities Network for the Enlightenment this morning. And uh, as believers, we should all take this seriously. We have just one environment. Uh, God is not going to give us 
any other we are to take care of it we are stewards so we have to take care of it and uh, well we move right into our local segment in um, Dagbani yes so um, stay tuned <laughs> Bile mambo yele 